Uh, so I suck at bar muscle ups. You fix me up real quick. Can you make me look like Christina? Just make you get up there once. Yeah. yeah. We can try. Dude learns for our muscle ups. What are any questions you have for Mia in the comments? Why do we want it out here instead of where you said not to? You're People who are doing it wrong will be where? Do you think a lot of these athletes even know they're doing a different kip? Can you show me step two so I can better understand why we did step one? But wait, 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 arch. Yes. I don't even touch the concept of turning over until these steps are dialed in, until they have. So were you like hitting your chest and get stuck? Yeah, that allows you to do what? So how do you get around that? Looks like she's getting her hands all up on me. Then what? What drills are not good? Are there any telltale signs that you're not ready to even try bar muscle ups yet? The biggest issue that I see with people when they're trying to learn bar muscle ups just from the get-go is they think it's like an exaggerated chest to bar and they go for a similar style kip, but just try to get a little higher. And what's, what's the, show me what the chest to bar kip looks like. So if you were to do a kipping chest to bar, I think I missed, but no, you hit it. <laughs> um, and then people will try to just do that a little bit higher and try to turn their elbows over and then what but ends it's not up that. So what is it? So it's actually more like a toes to bar kip down here. And when I'm teaching bar muscle ups, I always tell people that what happens down here is way more important than what happens up there. By down here, you mean like the your kip, hips? Yeah, the kip position so show me the toe to bar into the kip. turnover. So if you're doing a toast bar, you're more lat engaged, pushing back on the bar. Is this a good spot to stand or should I come somewhere else? You can stand there. Okay. Yeah. To see what you're trying to show? Yeah. Okay. Could you see it? I guess. Yeah. It's more about what you're thinking as you're going into a bar muscle up. Don't think about trying to do a higher chest bar. Think about a more lat driven movement. Perfect. Basically the, the point is don't try to do an exaggerated chest bar. It might work, but you'll probably end up chicken winging and a lot of people get hurt that way. Yeah. Why do people think that way you think? I mean, it makes sense. You have a chin over bar pull up and then a chest bar pull up and then a bar muscle up is a little bit higher, but you have to get more. It's not about just making contact or getting a small amount of your body over the bar. You have to set yourself up to rotate your body over the top of the bar. And in order to do that, you have to be further behind the bar. Ah. So when you're doing a, ch a chest bar or a pull up, you stay very close. To the like bar. That. So it's not about the height that you get, it's about getting your body in the right spot right. to, I guess, turn over? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What next, coach? So when you're initiating a bar muscle up, I, uh, when it comes to the swing position, I think of four steps to build on. The first is jumping into it. So similar to how it's not a chest bar, when you go to do a pull up or a chest bar, you really just stand under the bar and then jump straight up and go into it. You're trying to get your body in a different position for bar muscle ups. So you want to be further behind the bar when you go into it. And you're that's pretty jump. far. This is pretty far. This is yeah, that was exaggerated for dramatic effect. Oh, okay. But, so <laughs> how would it be if you were really um, about doing here? So I think like um, biceps kind of near my ears. So wherever that puts you in relation to the bar. Okay. So but most people you said will be like right yeah, under it. Like, no, you're, you're people who are doing it wrong will be where usually right here yeah and okay you just jump straight up but if you jump from behind the bar in that like bicep to ear position you're going to set up some momentum to get your body going forward which is the first step into getting your body behind the bar as you come back so you'll stand behind the bar biceps by ears and then you'll jump into the bar and just feel what it's like to have a little bit of momentum going. Do it again so I can see your full body. Step one, jump into a pike position and then just hold that position and feel that slight amount of shift forward of the bar. Okay. What a lot of people will mess up there is they'll go into it and because all, all of our kipping is arch hollow base that we do or most of our kipping that we do, um, it's natural to just jump up and go right into an arch, but what you don't want to do, um, film from like here so that the bar is, or the upright is like cutting me in half. Okay. What you don't want to do is be in your arch position 
here, you want to be a little in front of the bar. Say that again. You want to be in your arch position where? You, you don't want to be in your arch position right with the bar, with the upright, like cutting you. So this is the plane of the bar. Yeah. You want to be a little bit in front of the bar. I see. Okay. Um, and in order to do that, you have to hold that pike position for a second. So what you're going to so want to do... Why do we want it out here instead of where you said not to? Because we're working on building the... It's all about putting yourself in the proper position here to turn over. Which right? wouldn't matter in the chest of bar, but it does here. Correct. So this is just the first step of okay. that. Um, so yeah, it's... So it that be... seems like what it is. It's like the people are just so used to their kit being one way, where yeah. it's like, no, you got to do a totally... Not totally different, but different kip here yeah it's it's a pretty different kip and it's also a lot about patience and waiting for your body to be in certain spots do you think a lot of these athletes even know they're doing a different kip uh or is it just kind of like they just i mean when i first learned to bar muscle up i didn't like i, I could probably pull up a video of my first bar muscle up and it's exactly what i told you not to do yeah. i still got up there yeah but it was an exaggerated chest bar it was a chicken wing and so you can do them with a the bag kip yeah, you definitely like if we, can. If we bumped into Alexis and asked her, are you doing a different kip for your bar muscle ups? Do you think she would know? Or... Yeah, she would know. She would know. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Continue. Um, what was I saying? So, yeah, when you go into that pike, just be careful not to jump and then immediately go into your arch position. The key is to hold that pike position just a little bit so your body is swinging in front of the plane of the bar. So okay. it's just like your invisible... I think maybe We're I scared. will not to rush you, but I think can we sh can you show me step two so I can better understand why we did step one? Yeah. So step two is the arch position, and that's so when we're doing kipping pull ups, um, toes kipping toes to bar, you're going from you have the the hollow position and then the arch position, and you're moving in between those. So it's similar concepts. You're just waiting for different positions. So if you think of that jump in as the hollow, it's not really a hollow. It's more of a pike. So we're we're in that hollow pike, and then we wait, and then we go into the arch. So it's still the same positions, it's just different timing. So wait, 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 arch. Yes, so okay. pike, arch. So that little delay where I'm letting my body come forward of the bar sets me up. And sorry to be that guy, but that's the whole point of this video. Uh, can you show me one where you don't wait? Yeah. Okay, you and now, see it? yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, you just went a little earlier. Yeah. Uh, maybe can you do one where you don't wait immediately, followed by one where you do wait? Or am I asking too much? No, here? I just have to jump off the bar. Oh, okay, that's fine. Okay. So Let's see it. Don't wait or do wait first. Uh, Let's see it. I don't know. You tell me. Whatever. Don't okay. wait first. Don't wait first. And then do wait. So I'm just setting my body up to be in the arch a little bit in front of the bar. And again, all of this is setting myself up to be in the proper position when I get up here and then turning over. So okay. how long would someone be doing these? So you got different steps. I'm imagining you want people to practice the steps or is this just breaking it down? Uh, like, do I need to do no. each of these parts like a whole bunch is like practice or can I just learn yeah, all the so parts? Yeah, so when and... I'm teaching someone a bar muscle up, I don't even touch the concept of turning over until these steps are dialed in, until wow. they have the body control because there's this phenomenon that happens when someone tries to turn over a bar muscle up or a ring muscle up called the turnover blackout, where they go, they hit, they can do all these things, or they, have, they think they have the body control, and then they go to turn over and they do nothing right because they're just so focused on turning over. So what I try to do with athletes is drill this position so much that it's all that they can do. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then when they go to turn over, they, if they do have the turnover blackout, at least they have enough uh, repetitions that this is these are still the positions that they're going to hit. And then also, if you don't have the body control to go through these positions, and you're probably not strong enough to safely do bar muscle ups yet, so it's like a like a rite of passage. Yeah, no one wants to hear that shit though. Yeah, well. All right, got it. So we'll do these what? steps. Do you have a recommended like how many times you do step one? How many times you do step two? <clears throat> um, or is that more like just, get a good coach watching you? I say um, set up a camera. I mean, if you have a coach, awesome. But a lot of people don't have a coach that's watching them every time that they train. So set up a camera. What I would do is I would put my camera over there. I would do a jump to pike. 
I'll go over to my camera. I look at it. All right, did I hold the position? Not really. Okay, let me go back and try to fix it a little bit more. Okay, now I got it. Let me drill it a few times so that every time is perfect. And once I hit like five in a row that are perfect, then I'll go on to step two. But definitely film yourself because a lot of times what you think you're doing is not what you're doing. But definitely film yourself because a lot of times what you think you're doing is not what you're doing. But definitely film yourself because a lot of times what you think you're doing is not what you're doing. All right, sorry to interrupt your flow here, but did you used to be a rusher on this? Because I know you've spent a lot of time, mm -hmm. if these didn't come naturally for you, mm -hmm. did you have a phase where you were like, no, nah, I'm just going to do everything all at once? Like, was breaking it down in this way annoying to you at any point? No, but... I also didn't know how to break it down this way when I first started learning bar muscle ups. Did like, anyone try to break it down to you? No, no one really oh, okay. taught me these concepts. And I, I think that was just a product of like, we're talking, I don't know, eight years ago now or something. So there's a lot more detailed coaching on these things now, or, or at least I didn't know of you didn't these know things before. Yeah. yeah, but once I realized, hey, these are not really getting better. I'm just kind of stuck at like, I can do like three, but then when I'm tired, I can only do singles and then I'm always chicken winging. And I was like, well, let's try to figure out what's going on. Right. So, okay. I'm a, um, I'm, a, I'm a breaker downer. All right. Sorry. I've messed up your whole flow, but you gave us no, step one, step flow. two. What else about step two or should we move to step three? That's basically it for step two. Um, I guess a note on it is try not to get all like scorpiony in it. Try to hold. A, a tight position in your legs and you don't have to be perfectly straight and I mean some gymnasts may yell at me for that but try to hold a, a tight body line and because that's just a better way to move and going to set you up to have more power as you go forward. And is there things that people usually mess up in step two besides scorpion? Um, the mo it's mostly not waiting which is really like step one into step two. Oh, yeah. So if you wait on step one then you're really you're just going into an arch position and it's most people that have, if you're doing bar muscle ups, you've learned arch and hollow and right. you know what you're doing. Just so we can refresh, show me like you doing like five or so reps, however many you would teach someone to do of just step two okay. or step one and two. Step one plus step two together. Yeah, yeah, together. And then I would go. Watch your video. Between every rep you would do that. Yeah, because, I mean, I guess you could do a couple reps, but I would rather just see if I'm doing it right and fix it. You wouldn't versus... film like four and then go watch a video? Or it doesn't matter? It doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter. Just don't go too long without checking and make yeah. sure you're doing it right. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, give me two more. All right. I checked the video, you look okay. Okay, thanks, thanks. Um, all right, so next, this is where the, the toes to bar -y concept comes in, is when you're doing a bar muscle up, the first lifting that happens needs to be of your lower body. So your toes or your knees, um, different athletes do it differently. If you watch Alexa, she's a big like knee drive up person. Um, I'm more of a toe up, I'm trying to be more knee drive like Alexis, but it's a work in progress. Um, either way, before you're working on rising your upper body or even your hips towards the bar, you want to get your toes or knees towards the bar. And this is where it's kind of like a toes to bar kip. So what I tell people here is set a target ahead of you at, to spot. So I don't know, like the, it's not really anything good over there. Mike. Yeah, if Mike were standing up tall, he'd be a good, uh, good target. I'm trying, yeah, Mike's napping though. And I would try to get my toes higher than his head in this uh, portion. So it's a toe rise with some sort of spotting. Turn. Okay, let's see a few reps. So as you're doing that, it's, sim it's, it's almost like a three quarters toes to bar. So like you're pulling down on the bar to like lift yourself a little bit? Yeah, yeah. But just just like let it happen with the momentum. Don't worry too much about getting as high as you can. It's more about getting your feet above your target. Okay. So let me ask this question. You said that you want to worry more about your lower body coming out. So what would be the opposite of that? And can you show me what that looks like? Can you do a bad one or? Yeah, so the opposite would be 
I go into my kip, I've done my arch, and now I want to get over the bar, so I'm just going to start pulling myself up. Um, oh, so basically you just arm pull. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, without thinking about getting any other part of your body up first. So this is like the pre before you rise. You want to get more up here, and then the next step will be about okay. rising. Well, let's see that uh, step three again. And so you said you go with more of your feet and Lex is more of like a knee, but all yeah. you care about is lower body getting up. Yeah. Can you fake like your Lex or that's not yeah, even in yeah. your repertoire? No, I can. <clears throat> aha, aha. Okay. So either one of those could work. Either one is fine. Whatever you prefer, whatever feels as long more as natural. You're not early arm pull. Yeah, your arms should be completely <clears throat> straight at this time. Think of them as like you're still hooks on a bar elbows are locked out and any rising is just coming from my lats because my momentum is starting to push me back which is what we want we did that um jump to pike we got tension in the arch here now as our legs come up it pushes our body back behind the bar so we're starting to create this space here to eventually be able to turn over without crashing into the bar what out of steps one, two, and three are when you're working with people is the one that they usually mess up? I'd say step one, like not, or the like the transition from one to two, not holding that pike position a little bit. Um, okay. Anything else on three? Not really. Three is pretty simple. Just pick something to spot, and you should see like this line. If uh, so, I can't do bar muscle ups facing this way because I kicked the wall. But if you have a wall just like put a piece of tape there and like see your feet get right above that and that's cool. that's three four and then four so this is the last of this what i call the swing steps so there's more to a bar muscle up than this but these are the body positions that you need to be in before you uh, go to turnover hey so, guess what what my memory card's almost full be right back okay bye this is where you break the early arm bend habit and the goal here is to work on getting your hips as high as you can, as close to the bar as you can, without bending your arms at all. So your arms are, we, we got our feet up and we're starting to already come back a little bit. What we're trying to do is use a hip drive to continue that arm, straight arm press and try to get our shoulders as high as we can and our hips as high as we can without bending the arms. I know that was my problem. It was probably, it was, it's most people's oh, problem. Really? Yeah. yeah. I would always early. And then like someone was just like, don't do that. And I was yeah. like, oh yeah. Cause if once you're starting, you get the feet up and you're starting to come back a little, if you start to bend too early, then you're cutting the amount of space that you have to turn over. So were you like hitting your chest and getting stuck? Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically cause you weren't being patient in that final position where you're getting further behind the bar so you have space to turn over and you're letting your hips go up which you want yeah, the closer your hips are to the to, bar the easier it is to i basically over. had to just exaggerate like way longer than i even in my head i thought i wanted right. to yeah and I was like, and oh. it's a if you haven't done this before and you've only done kipping gymnastics or like kipping pull-ups and kipping chest to bar it's a totally different feeling there's no other movement that really feels like this toes to bar a little but you're not trying to go up in toes to bar right okay so, let's see what it looks like okay okay cool so what i was doing there so i waited for my feet to get up and then i popped my hips up trying to get them as high as i could and pressed down and from what it seemed to me, it felt like my shoulders were higher than the bar, which is ideal. Usually if your shoulders are at least bar level, then you could probably turn over. Let's see one more time, let's see. See where them shoulders go. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're way higher. Yeah. So that's kind of the metric. If your shoulders are, I'd say just clearing the plane of the bar, then you're probably have enough, if you're hitting the positions right, you have enough straight arm and lat strength to rise. It probably makes sense for you to turn over. If you're doing that drill and you're kind of getting stuck around here, 
then you probably need to do more lat strengthening, do more like straight arm strength work, continue to do this drill. It's a great drill and focus on trying to push down. So keep doing the drill while you're trying to actually get stronger. Right, yeah. That's actually a good question to ask now though. So with all these steps, um, how realistic is it that I, or how long would I be in these steps without even moving past those? Yeah, it's so dependent on how strong you are. Well, take the average of the all the people you've ever worked with. How long is this phase on average? I, I know it's different for different folks, yeah. but... It's so wide. It's really about like how strong your pulling is. So for you, you could probably do this a couple times and be able to do a bar muscle up. For someone who maybe like their body weight or their their strict pulling strength isn't up to where their body weight is, they could do this for a year, you know? But it's it's not because they don't get the drill down, it's because they're strong enough to do the, okay. the rep, yeah. yeah. I'd say just, if it's not about strength, it's just about getting the drill and the positions. A couple months, most people usually have it down. Cool. Yeah. So by not early arm bidding and getting as high as you can by keeping straight arms, that allows you to do what? Turnover without pulling very much or at all. So like this last open workout, you had a ton of chest bar fatigue going into it. And if you are a puller on bar muscle ups and you are dependent on pulling strength, your bar muscle ups are probably gonna suffer a lot after that workout. But if you see people who are really, or see videos of people who are really efficient at bar muscle ups with using the positions and their hips, then they're not really doing a lot of pulling to yeah. turn over. It's more about getting in the right position, timing it right, and then using your hips and really rotating over the bar more so than an aggressive pull over yeah. the bar. Now I know you um, don't only work with people just trying to get bar muscle ups, but you've worked with people who are really good at them that need to, tweak them so that they can be, what, what, what is it about whatever you're teaching here that allows them to be better at it? So with a lot of high level athletes, because they're so athletic and they pick up on stuff so quickly, they sometimes don't even know why they're good at something or why they're hitting certain, or if Must they're hitting, nice. certain, I know, right? <laughs> if they're hitting certain positions or not. So when they go to failure or get really fatigued, things will fall apart because they don't know what to focus on to fix it. So if you know what these steps are and you know what these positions are, then you, as you're getting fatigued, you can think, all right, I'm starting to turn over really low. It's because I'm not, I'm, I'm starting to pull a little bit too early and I should wait till I see like my eye line over the bar and then I can rotate over. Just having those cues where you can be in the workout and yeah. think, all right. Because it's one thing when you're, it's all fun and games when we're just chilling here. Yeah. But if I'm huffing right. wind in the middle of a workout, yeah. Different. And, and with, you know, as people continue to get better in the sport, the separation, it's harder to separate. So just having those little tools in your toolbox are important. Okay. Know, for high so level athletes. Does that finish the swing? Or? Yeah, that's it for the swing. Um, once you get to the point where you can get your shoulders a little bit over the bar at bar level, then you can probably start working on turnovers. Um, for my favorite thing to do for turnovers is to get someone to spot you. Um, going back to what I said about the turnover blackout where, you know, you have all these awesome positions that you fill and then you go to turnover and you just kind of freak out a little and do it yeah, too early. Yeah, how often do people crush steps one, two, three, and four, and then you get to what, turnover step yeah. one or is this now step five? I guess it's step five. Okay, yeah. people get to step five and yeah. then do they mess up one through four yeah. all of a sudden? They yeah. Do? yeah, yeah. that's the turnover blackout. That's where okay. all your skill work just flushes away because- So how do you get around that? I like using a spotter. So if you have someone spot you into a bar muscle up, then you can say, all right, my job is to hit all of the positions. And if you hit all the positions right, getting over the bar is really easy. You don't have to pull very hard. It's just about getting yourself from here to here it's like a, a partial sit up or a, a rotation over and it's really easy for a spotter to do that if you're in the right position. So the spotter is not only spotting you but also checking that you did one through four and stopping you if you didn't or, or letting um, you know that you missed them? Well it I guess yeah but you're then I guess I misunderstood what are they doing? they're turning you over the bar. Okay. So it's not like a spotter and bench press where they're like helping you if you fail. Like it's someone is, their job is to turn you over the bar. Maybe I can get someone to Just so, that, so that you're tribute. comfortable, so you're not 
right? So you get the feeling of turning over and it's not so foreign. Because if you've never been on top of a bar or on top of the rings, it's a little scary and Some also hesitation. like- yeah, it's just like this big thing, and I get yeah. that. Like, it's a skill that you're trying to Not get. Not for Christina. She's always up yep, there. Yeah, she lives Look up there. Look at her go. <laughs> so, um, let me, do you want me to get to sure. spot someone? Ash! What? That's what. Do you know how to spot a bar muscle up, or can I spot you a bar muscle up? Yeah. I do not know how to spot, so it looks like you're getting your hands on me. You don't know what? I said, I don't know how to spot, so it looks like she's getting her hands all up on me. Do you need grips? Do you want my grips? This is the TTT subscribe only, one dollar. <laughs> I think it'll be okay where me and we do Just a dollar? What the hell, man? Well, we're trying to get volume first. Oh, okay. And then two dollars. What do you get for two dollars? Titties. Oh, no. They call us triple titties. <laughs> Oh, this took a turn. <laughs> oh, Ashley. <laughs> okay, you've probably never been spotted in a bar muscle up. No. Okay, this is going to be great. You want to talk me through it? Yeah, so what she's going to do is she's going to go into her bar muscle up steps. And then when she gets to the point where step four, basically, so her hips are going up and she's pressing down, I'm going to have one hand behind her thigh and one on her lower back. Well, how much does that cost? For you? One, one dollar, I guess. <laughs> For her, it's free. And then I'm going to just rotate her over the top. Got it. So this might look a little weird because she is a semifinal athlete who doesn't need a spotter, but try to like not be awesome, I guess. Okay. okay. Don't be awesome. Like make it a hard bar muscle. Uh, just, okay, okay. Yeah. Ready? Well, we'll see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> we can edit maybe I should. <laughs> maybe I should have been the demo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you see my hands? Yep. You want to do one more just as we got her all the way over here? Yeah. Okay. I feel like awesome. that one was better. Yeah, how do you job. how do you spot wrong? Thanks. I'm out. How do most people mess up the spot? Um like are you really just kind of like your hands are just like there? Are you pushing a lot? Hit, yeah, you can kind of feel it as you're going like if someone needs a lot of push and lift. If someone's really good at the swing steps and they're getting their shoulders above the bar, then I'm really just thinking of like guiding their torso over. And this hand is more like, I'm not lifting a ton. It's more just like support so they know I'm here. And then this rotates them over. Okay. For someone who isn't as good as at the fourth step and their shoulders are around here, then you're gonna have to kind of crouch a little bit more and do more of like a lift and rotate over. But if you're not getting your shoulders to the bar level or a little across, then you probably don't really even need, um, you don't need to be doing spotted reps yet. Wait okay. until you get to that point. So we got onto this whole spotter nonsense because, remind me why? Um, you said that would be the next step uh, for the turnover. Right, yeah, to practice the turnover. Okay. Um, you can also practice like the box drill for turnovers. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this drill because I don't think that it incorporates step one through four. Correct. And also it's easy to just pull with your arms, but it is good for one thing. Um, let me show you. This is like a little bit of a tangent, but I see a lot of people on um, bar muscle ups when they go to turn over, they get stuck here. Like with, uh, can you see where my wrist is? Like how my hand is kind of like in this position. Okay. And they go to turn and they try to get their elbow, yeah, 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 yeah. but they don't rotate their hands. So okay. everything has to rotate together in order to get over the bar. So this is a good drill to practice that, the feeling of rotating your wrist with your elbow, which sounds basic, but a lot of people miss no, that. No, I, yeah, I've done yeah. that a ton. Where yeah. you like, you get one rep and then the next one you're like, and it's because yeah. of that. Yeah, so for that, you can just do, um, try when you're doing this to still pass through a little bit of the straight arm here and not just go here because you can right you're using your legs so I could easily just go like that and I'm really close to the bar so try to get more behind the bar and then jump into the rotation and practice like the feeling of rotating like that 
Um, so it, it, the box drill can be good for that. And then it's also good for if you have a little bit of fear of getting on top of the bar and being this high off the ground, just getting some reps in and feeling what it's like to be that high up. What percentage though do you recommend just saying find a spotter? You have that option, find a spotter. Yeah, yep. okay, so try not to skip yeah, that. Yeah, way better. Um, okay, so you get your spotter, they help you up there, then what? Accumulate reps to the point where you can feel like the spotter is helping you less and less. And if you feel confident, if you feel like I understand where my body is in all of the positions, including yeah. like I can feel that I'm keeping my arms straight before I turn over, then go for some reps yeah. and see what happens. And during this whole process, I'm assuming you'll tell me that I need to continually review the video to make sure that I didn't start skipping steps. Mm -hmm. um, and then how often when you're working with people, do you like, I know when you're going through stuff like this, you're like, well, I graduated from step three and now I'm on four. Yeah. But how often do people slip up and then need to just keep going back? Or even you, do you still go back? Yeah, to I use these when I warm up every every time for bar muscle ups. I mean, it's a great warm up because you're warming up the positions that you're going into. Um, when people are, it's not really so much about graduating the steps. It's like if, if someone knows what they're doing, but they're stuck on the, the straight arms or step four, then I'll say like warm up steps one through three and then accumulate 20 reps of step four. But step four is steps one, two, three, and four, right? It's because every step adds on to the next one. So you're still doing them all. But if you are reviewing videos and you're noticing, oh, I'm starting to get into the habit of not holding my pike position, then go back and spend a little bit more time on that and make that correction. There's a lot of stuff to think about when you're learning a new uh, skill. So it's common to you know you focus on one thing and you improve that and then something else starts to slip so it's just a i mean i've been doing bar muscle ups for a long time now and i'm still like before you rolled up i was asking adam to help me with some cues to make mine more efficient it's like yeah. there's always things that are, that can be better okay um so you got the spotter and now what now you're just trying reps full reps by yourself yeah so if you do reps with the spotter you feel confident go for it film yourself if you get it awesome if not you should have the tools now to know why you didn't get it. So that's the big plus of going through those steps is you know where your body should be in each position and you can watch a video and say, oh, okay, I didn't hold my pike position. So therefore my arch was like too far underneath the bar and then I wasn't able to get into the right position to turn over. Or I didn't, I skipped the toe rise because I, you know, I just focused on, I drove my hips too quickly and didn't get my toes up. So knowing those things allows you to, go back and see why you're doing it wrong because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's you know just a little tweak okay and if you fall in that group where you just don't have the upper body strength yet to get there do you have recommended a like accessory exercise to add into your program what like, or what do you tell people usually who aren't well i guess usually you work with people who are following our program yeah um so well, what do y'all do yeah so in our program we Actually, this year are going to have in the strength bias path that's starting up. We're going to have gymnastic strength as well. Um, we're always working on you know, gymnastic strength in general. I mean, it's it's nothing crazy, nothing fancy. It's strict pull-ups. It's um, straight arm, like you can do straight arm lat pull downs, hollow body straight arm uh, pullovers. Just you know, building your your lat and your pulling strength. Yeah. Like, I and mean, you could Google strict pull-up program, and you know that's getting you in that direction but i would still work on getting these you positions still the down yeah yeah because yeah. once you get the strength you're going to need right. another position right. all right cool yeah. anything else we missed or anything um, else you want to give uh, encouragement to people who don't quite have it yet so a little like tweener thing you can do for people who have the steps down but are struggling with getting up high enough is a box entry version So this is a good way to kind of force yourself to have a little bit more momentum in the swinging, which is also something that people will struggle with when they're uh, starting to work through this. Is they're just not getting as much like um into their positions. So you can use a box entry and do all the same things, but this simulates a little bit of 
like when you're coming down from the top into a second rep, you usually have more momentum than the first rep. So this is like kind of similar, gives you more of that pop. You can do the same thing here. You can do the jump to pike, you can do pike, arch, and it just gives you more momentum. Um, when people struggle with that feeling of holding the pike position and swinging forward, I'll put them on these because you, you can just kind of like yeah. jump off. I like that. And go Because it feels like you could, you could feel it, and then yeah. so now you know what you're looking for when you do it off the floor. Right. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I like that drill. Um, not a huge fan of banded drills, but Ooh, that's a good thing. Let's dive into that. Anything, okay. What drills are not good? You said banded. Any other ones? Or well, continue your thought on banded. Yeah. Then. I I don't like learning bar muscle ups with the band because you can't really hit the swing steps. I do think there's a place for bands. If you are stuck on step four and you're not getting a lot of height, you can use a band from a box entry. So you hook the band here, you stick your foot in it. And like the steps are gonna be a little weird, but you you already know the steps, right? You know those So you positions. can't skip knowing the steps. Right, right. You gotta know those first. But this is for if you're struggling to get the feeling of the hip pop. So you can go through and the band will, should I just show you? Sure. Hey. So the band will just kind of help you get a little bit more lift. And it, it gets a little funky, but it's just a, a tool you can use. So you try to hit the same positions. That wasn't even as good as my you other one. You just get but smacked in the face the whole yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. It's not, like like I said, the, the band in general. What was that helping you do? Just get higher? Yeah. Okay. Help, it just helps so you, you like lift yeah, a little bit look, more. It looked a little awkward because you are getting plenty high right. and you didn't yeah. need it. Yeah. But for someone who might be struggling, yeah. it'll help you it get It can there. help give you the feel of it a little bit. Are there any other ones that you commonly see that you disagree with or think are misused maybe? Mm. Or that you wish people would spend less time on or anything like that? Probably the box turnover. The unless, thing we already mentioned? Yeah, unless yeah. you're using that for the reasons that I listed. Yeah. Or maybe there's other, you know, other training reasons, but <clears throat> not to learn how to do a bar muscle because it doesn't put you, it doesn't allow you to go into the right positions. Um, and then same thing, like if you use band, use it as a tool to help you tweak a position that you already know. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Basically, just you. do the swing steps are there and make any, sure you know how to do that. Are there any telltale signs that you're not ready to even try bar muscle-ups yet? Like, if you just got a brand new client, they said, I can't do X, Y, or Z, would mm -hmm. you be like, let's not even... Yeah. Like, is there any of that? Yeah, if you can't do strict pull-ups, definitely not. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say for females, like at least three, three to five strict pull-ups. For males, probably a little bit more. Um, what else? If you don't have... And that's more like just for injury pre prevention, I would assume, right? Yeah, injury prevention and also you're just not... You're going to burn yourself and, out and by you, not being able to yeah, do it. Yeah, and um, I've seen people do bar muscle ups who aren't strong enough to do them and you can't do them like this. The only way you're going to be able to do it is the chicken wing version, yeah. which eventually is going to hurt yourself. And yeah. also, like, you're, you're going to hit a ceiling of development and you're eventually and you're not it might be cool to like get your first one sure, and sure. you know struggle through singles but you're eventually you want to be able to do yeah. a set of five right and you're just never gonna eventually be you're gonna want to look cool like christina <laughs> yeah. we wouldn't put a chicken wing up there <laughs> we should though there's an empty spot right behind you yeah um and then if you haven't done just like basic like arch to hollow control um Kipping pull-ups, kipping chest to bar, toes to bar. You should know how to do all those things first. But most people do. It's more about not having the strict strength. Okay. And final question. Since, uh, what if you are so tight in your lats and that's the only reason you got one? Now what, coach? Just <laughs> never stretch again? Uh, I think if you learn the swing steps, you'll be fine. Oh, you I was just, afraid you were going to say that. You should just do one. You want to no. do one? I'll hold the camera. No, I'm good. Come on. That's all the time we got. <laughs>